Coming up, a look at my favorite autumn belt knife. I get my first folding saw and big bad bowies. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. One of my favorite comments this past week was from Jeff Hamilton, 4587. He says, I have revolving pockets, you know, differing folders depending on what's in store for the day or my mood. I have, however, a TKEL FLN. That's the karambit. That hasn't left my pocket. I train with it, solo practice with it, and sometimes sleep with it. I've made it the North Star around which all folders res uh, revolve. Uh, beautiful little statement. Let me repeat that. I've made it the North Star around which all folders revolve. Interesting. That's kind of how I've been going with my fixed blade knives, whatever I'm carrying. I, I carry, you know, I rotate a lot with the uh, with the fixed blades, but whatever fixed blade I have on me, everything else uh, is kind of determined by that blade shape, etc. cetera. So uh, Jeff, uh, Kindred Spirits, in a sense. And then that FLN is awesome. The one thing I would do is caution you against sleeping with it. I got to say, I've had a few uh, close call, call uh, close calls where I've fallen asleep with a knife in my pocket and just the thought of it coming out by accident. Oh, terrible, terrible. It reminds me of the Godfather and I, I hate that scene. So uh, be careful with that. But uh, Jeff, thanks for the comment and uh, glad to hear you're loving that FLN. Uh, next comment was from Preacher2727. And this is just uh, something that put wind in my sails. He said, love your assessment on knives. No BS. Right to the point. Great job. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Preacher. Uh, sometimes you see a comment and it uh, you just need to see it at that moment. And I did. So thank you very much for that, Preacher. I appreciate it. Keep watching. We'll have a lot more cool knives and great shows. All right. Uh, all of that said, let's now get to a pocket check. What's in his pocket? Let's find out. Here's the knife junkie with his pocket check of knives. Going to go slow here because I jacked up my thumb. Uh, yes, with a knife, and no, there is no nerve damage, though uh, I wouldn't know it from the way it feels. But uh, today in my front right pocket, I've had what I've carried basically since I uh, hurt my thumb. I've been carrying all Emerson's in my front right pocket because uh, just flicking it with the thumb and all that, you know, it's just I would just rather uh, not have to deal with the opening. Flippers are fine, but uh, I've been coming back to the wave just because you can draw out the knife, the wave. Uh, opens the blade and you're good to go. And these are some knives I have not carried in a long time, especially the ZTs. I, I, I carry my Emerson's with some regularity still, but the zero tolerances, frankly, I kind of forget about. Um, so today I had this one. I love it. Great blade shape. And that LMAX is pretty damn nice. Uh, this was after zero tolerance figured out their LMAX. I don't know if you remember, but, uh, ZT was actually the first company I heard of using LMAX kind of on large production blades. And they were having problems with it initially. I think the heat treat and then they were they were uh, running their grinders too fast on the edge or something, burning the edges. Anyway, this was, I remember, famously uh, after they figured out LMAX. So great blade, uh, great knife, of course, designed by Ernest Emerson uh, from the, in my estimation the absolute heyday of zero tolerance next on me oh i have it actually on me right here <laughs> i put it back in my pocket um i have the new one from jack wolf knives such a great knife this is the benny's clip and this beauty is in the purple curanite what do they call it purple cosmos something like that something uh evocative of space to me it looks like the curtains like the velvet curtains of a lush sort of um, 1930s mansion. I don't know. I don't know why that pops up, but I love the look of this knife. Got to be careful with it because it does have a stout pull. Uh, not only the look of this knife, but uh, the Benny is one of my favorites. I know I say that about every Jack Wolf knife, but you don't hear me say that about some of them. Uh, but these big clip points, I love the Benny's clip is kind of feels the biggest, even though you match it up 
uh, next to other jack wolves it's pretty darn close but uh, the broadness of the handle and the thickness of the blade and the uh the saber grind on this one also gives it a more stout feel. All the other Jack Wolf knives have a full height hollow grind. This one, as you can see, has a flat, just comes up to there. Uh, you got the crescent nail neck on this one. You have a triple fluted bolster. The bolster is a little bit longer. This has a hand rub satin uh, running horizontally and is incredibly sharp. You know, I, I um, frequently, I make the mistake of thinking that the Warncliffs, here's the... The Venom Jack, this one is so beautiful. And it's a terrific cutter. And you know it's terrific because I never use that word, but it is a really good cutter. And I always assume just because it has that tip, it's going to cut better than something like this. But this, th that belly, th that whole knife is so wicked sharp uh, that the belly is, uh, you just kind of touch things and it cuts. Um, so, uh, you know, you don't necessarily need that low point. Uh, to be able to do utility work with a, a super sharp knife like this. Uh, next up in my waistband uh, riding appendix today, it's getting a little bit cooler here, so I'm starting to carry like that again. Uh, the Fire Ant from Dirk Pinkerton. This is a custom, so handmade by the great and powerful Dirk Pinkerton. He's such a great knife maker. We we tend to think of him as a knife designer, which he is extraordinaire, and he's got designs with a bunch of different companies that we know, love, and trust, but he also makes them by hand at, in his own shop, and those, I will have you know, are exquisite. I have four handmade knives by him, I believe, four. Uh, needs to be more, but I have four right now, and this one, uh, it, and uh, well, I guess I'll finish that statement. They're all equally excellently done. I mean, they are... If you love the designs, they are perfect in hand and in cutting. They're just awesome. Uh, but this one is really easy to, to carry. It's got a four-inch blade. Four and a, uh, what is this? Now I don't want to speak out of school. Yeah, it depends on where you're looking at it. Three and a half, uh, yeah, three and a half inch or three and a quarter, depending on where you're measure, measuring it. Um, but a great size blade with three edges and melts in the hand. And you've got great uh, positive jimping there to stop your thumb from running up onto that uh, super sharp top edge. Uh, I love the Bakelite handle. Is that what it is? Bakelite, not Bakelite. Yeah, Bakelite. I love that handle. Uh, it's blue and black, and you can barely detect the blue. And to me, that's, I don't know, beautiful and subtle. What a great knife. I uh, haven't carried it in a little while. And you know that angular handle? is pretty comfortable in the in the well of the appendix or that that area where your legs kind of meet your your body you know how you can snug things in there that's a great sort of straight shape to fit in there okay lastly uh, i've been carrying this one a lot for emotional support and actually it goes nicely into the hidden here i'm going to be very careful with this into the uh hidden cargo pocket of a pair of 511 pants i've been wearing a lot uh, this summer because they're nice and light and stretchy for my expanding girth. Um, and yet it, you can hide this in the leg and you don't even see it. Really awesome knife. I love this thing. Um, this is the Aus 8 version. I got this at the Willie Knife Shop in uh, Delaware over uh, at the uh, in mid-August, end of August. And it's been a faithful companion ever since. I really, really like that knife. I don't know why it took me like 25 years to ever get a six inch version of the tie light, but uh, I'm glad I finally did. So this is what I had with me today. Not necessarily on me. Uh, this was not on me all day at all. Neither was this. I had to take this off at one point, uh, but here I had the ZT0620. Uh, I had the Benny's clip. I had the uh, Pinkerton fire ant, which they also have a custom, a, um, production folder version of with Kaiser. I think that's discontinued at this point. And the Tie Light 6. What did you have on you? Let me know. Drop it in the comments below. I always love hearing about that, what you guys carry. And um, I don't know. there's always something interesting when someone's carrying the same knife you're carrying on the same day. You'll see that. Oh my God, today I was carrying that too. It's like great minds thinking alike. All right. So we're here in autumn and last night we... Uh, Last night in this past weekend, we had our first bunch of fires outside, and um, I have a lot of uh, downed limbs that I ended up cutting up and, and using before even the firewood, and I had this on my belt, 
and I absolutely love this knife, the Boon 2 by Bark River Knives. And uh, I was excited to put this on because recently, uh, oddly, this spacer here was shifting around in the handle. It's like it's like everything loosened up a little bit, like it were like it was an older knife, uh, but there was no real gapping. There was no wiggle in it uh, when it was extended and it wouldn't extend much. I'd say like an eighth of an inch or maybe even like a sixteenth of an inch, but enough for me to tell and you could feel it. Uh, so I super glued it back in. Super glue is awesome. That's how I fixed my thumb. That's how I fixed my blade here. Uh, super glue is the best. Uh, what is it? I guess it's just an epoxy, but uh, it really did the job there. So yesterday uh, and well, last night and then all this past weekend, as I record this, I was outside with this on my belt and uh, working around the fire pit and uh, trying different things, different ways of lighting fires. And I am no um, outdoorsman, but I've been watching a lot of videos with outdoorsmen doing fun looking outdoorsy stuff. So uh, maybe as I get older and uh, as the family commitments shift and change, they haven't yet thank God. But as they do, maybe as we become empty nesters or something like that, uh, maybe I end up going camping a little bit more. Uh, my wife is sort of an indoor cat, but she uh, she appreciates beauty. And so um, there's a lot of that out in the natural world. So anyway, <laughs> that's what this knife evokes. To me, this is like a dad knife from the 30s or 40s, you know, going camping. Um, and this is, this is what, uh, you know, the man just puts on his belt just to just to be around, you know, the woods and around camp. And I love it. I love the apple seed edge. I love that convex edge on this. This thing is incredibly sharp, but also really stout. You're not going to bust this 3V, uh, I, I don't think. Um, I have a couple of 3V knives from Bark River Knives, and uh, uh, this is the only one I've put to the test. And did I put it to the test hard? Not really. Not yet, but... I'm going to keep carrying it, and I want that sheath to wear in, get a little more supple. It's nice and stiff. They make the best sheaths. They're so nice. Uh, but, yeah, there it is. Favorite autumn belt knife. What's your favorite autumn belt knife? Do you have one? Is it goofy that I have one? Could be. Okay, uh, next up, my daughter, Olympia, my younger daughter, she made me this. So this, uh, I got this thin leather cordage. And um, she's always asking me to braid her hair before bed. And I'm not good at braiding. I can give her a daddy tail. That's a daddy ponytail. Uh, but my wife has to do the braiding. So I kind of turned it around on her. I said, look, um, I have this great knife. It's a Fred Perrin design. She's like, really? I love Fred Perrin. I said, yeah. And it's made by Max Knives in France. Uh, I jute wrapped the handle. She said, oh, that's pretty gangster. I like that. And I said, but I need a way to hang it around my neck. It's so light and thin, even though it's got a, a big, uh, what do you call it, um, profile. This thing, I think I can get away with hanging around my neck, but I need a cool necklace. And this cordage I got is way too thin. Even if it does the job of holding the knife, it will slice through my neck. <laughs> it's so thin. So uh, I asked her if she'd braid me one. And she did. And it's awesome. I got to still figure out how I'm going to actually attach it to this knife. Those are the tail ends. Uh, but I told her I'd give her five bucks for each one. And all I had on me was a 20. So I gave that to her. And and uh, over this week, I've given her a deadline. I'm exacting three more of these. I think I'm going to replace uh, the, um, what do you call it? The paracord on some of my neck knives. I think that's kind of what's stopping me from, from carrying them. You got a knot back here. And I just never really figured out a great way of carrying my neck knives and this i love and it's been it was inspired by the knives by new oh it's on me the knives by nuge um primitive wicket and and how this knife has uh a leather cord with a little clip here as opposed to a uh, paracord and i like that it's 550 pounds uh to break paracord and if that's around your neck i mean i've been doing neck exercises but i don't think uh, i can hold up 550 pounds of paracord so uh, i'm gonna go with this braiding see what that does you say yeah braided leather will probably have the same effect probably but it'll look much cooler and it'll be way more personal so i just wanted to show this off i thought she did an awesome job all right and it looks cool with the jute no 
All right. Um, let's see. Uh, next up and lastly, in this uh, opening section, I want to show you this masterpiece or Meisterstuch, as we might say in Germany. This is the Demko Shark Lock. As you can see, this is the 80 20.5. But. OK. It is a special version. This comes to us from Mike at Northern Knives and uh and colorful filth that's paul munko's design uh paul munko's company and he is not only a great knife designer this is not his knife design of course uh but he is also an incredible artist and does this kind of beautiful anodizing so they uh teamed up for another project we gave away a pry bar that he anodized a while ago with a space theme that was so cool this is an underwater doom uh scene here you've got this giant squid and you got a great white shark and you're uh, well you got two you got one lurking back by the pivot and on this beautifully anodized uh sea you know that goes from this high voltage green to that beautiful blue and uh you've got that um scuba guy but he's got the old-fashioned diving bell this, this is just really really beautiful stuff um and not only well done but kind of captivates the imagination uh kind of gets you thinking what's what's the story here and then here you see this trench like this marianas style trench here is that what it's called marianas or mariana um and then this ancient looking submarine that's attached to something somewhere ship up up, up above is that a yeah okay and he's coming up out of that uh out of that trench there all sorts of uh, cool stuff happening there and then of course the blade is cerakoted with bubbles this thing is really awesome what i'm getting at it is this is the gentleman junkie knife giveaway knife for the month of september 2024 and we're gonna have uh, uh mike from northern knives coming on the show to give it away actually i should re reach out to paul munko too, see if he wants to join us uh he uh designed one of my favorite knives uh my favorite uh, production knife of 2023 was designed by him the kaiser mystic and here you can see he's uh continuing on that maritime theme here with this knife uh this is a true collector's piece uh this is titanium of course and uh, you will you will enjoy owning this if you get this you will want to uh, get a leather pocket slip for it because they did not mill out holes for the pocket clip the pocket clip is in here if you want to have holes milled in uh, but this is not one you want to clip into your pocket. Uh, you don't want to wear this down. This is something you want to show off and brag about. So if you're carrying it around, you want it in a nice uh, comfy leather slip that covers the whole thing. And you're going to pull it out and you're going to show it off. Maybe you'll even uh, uh, cut the seams of the pizza, the stubborn seams of that pizza. But then you'll wipe it off, put it away, and, you know, that's that. Got to use it maybe every once in a while. Beautiful. It says prototype on the back. And I'm loving all the high voltage green. I think it looks beautiful. All right. I'm putting this thing away before I do anything bad to it here. Like even my wedding ring. I'm worried about that scarring it or something. So away it goes. All right. Uh, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at a few knives that are coming out. But before we get there, I would like to say that you can download this show to your favorite podcast app. That's a great way to listen to it. If you can't make it, uh, if you can't make it on uh, YouTube, can't sit there and watch it. And uh, I get that. Also, uh, you can share the show. We like that. That's a great way to help. And um, you can also go to Patreon if you want and help support the show there. Great way to do that is to scan the QR code here or go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Again, that's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Adventure Delivered, your monthly subscription for hand-picked outdoor, survival, EDC, and other cool gear from our expert team of outdoor professionals. The knifejunkie.com slash battle box. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, so in Knife Life News this week, let's talk about Civivi. We talk about Civivi a lot in Knife Life News. Last time we mentioned them, we we mentioned how they will be now featured in the big box stores. Uh, well, Walmart. And that's pretty exciting, got to say. Not only for uh, Civivi, you know, ha happy for them. Uh, but it's nice to know that you can go into Walmart and get a great knife because the Walmarts around here, sadly, lack Okay, uh, multifunction button lock coming from Civivi. This one's called the Pragma, kind of like pragmatic. 
or practical or something like that. Uh, this one is a, a, not an unfamiliar profile when you look at it. it just looks like a cool Warncliffe folder with a 2.2 inch Nitro V blade coming from uh, coming from Civivi with a button lock. But this one, as you can see in the back, has a carabiner slash um, bottle opener steel backspacer so a little sort of multi-tool there's no clip on this no pocket clip there's just the uh beaner clip there and you just hang it on whatever but it's a cool little we're gonna call this a folder with a little extra i don't think we can really call it a multi-tool and uh, that's an opinion that i got from ben schwartz of of knife news but i tend to agree with him three functions like a way to fasten it to you a way to open a bottle and a way to cut is not necessarily uh does not necessarily a multi-tool make but uh, we'll call this a folder plus aluminum handle love that uh stainless uh stainless backspacer with the beaner and the and the bottle opener and this one here comes in a damasteel version as you can see with that red so a couple of different anodized versions available this month that's september 2024 uh cool cool little thing they, they come up with a lot of uh, little knifelets and knifey, knifey objects, and that is definitely a knife. But, I mean, I like all the little kind of non-just straight-ahead folder and fixed blade things they put out. So good addition to that line. All right, Artisan Cutlery, they do Kickstarters, which is kind of interesting. Um, and they're doing a Kickstarter for a new knife called The Wizard from a new designer, or new to us, called Dustin Rhodes. And this is coming in four con configurations, similar to the uh, knife they came out with uh, about a year ago, um, whose name I'm now forgetting. Uh, but this knife here uh, comes in, will come in four configurations if it, if it meets its Kickstarter goals. Uh, it's a full-size folder. The goal here is to have a full-size folder in the smallest overall package. So if you look at the handle-to-blade ratio on this picture that Jim has up, it almost looks one-to-one. -one. Uh, you've got a 3.47 inch drop point harpoon blade there, beautiful blade by the way, in a four inch handle. Now we're used to seeing, we're used to seeing uh, a blade and then a handle that's basically an inch longer. Uh, that's pretty much how it plays out most of the time. Now here, it's a half an inch longer. And so it really makes it look, especially with the back taper on the, um, on the pommel it really makes it look like it's a one-to-one -one. Uh, and i really like that i appreciate that three ways to deploy this uh, enthusiasts knife no doubt uh, a four uh, front flipper thumb stud and then of course the lock with centrifugal force uh, you can see here three of the four versions a um tie a titanium frame with uh, fat carbon inlay titanium frame with um, tie mascus inlay and then the full Godilla tie mascus uh, with the mirror polish blade. All really nice looking. Oh, wait, these all have, yeah, all with the, that one has that mirror. Um, oh, one of them is going to come in Magna Cut. That's what it was. Uh, so three of them have S90V and one of them is going to come in Magna Cut. The Kickstarter is live if this one uh, tickles your fancy. Uh, definitely go for it. This is an interesting way for Artisan to highlight. Uh, um, designers that aren't tried and true, I guess, in the in the um, industry or to them, you know, let's see if let's do let, we'll make some prototypes. We'll make some different versions. Uh, let's start a Kickstarter, see if we can fund this uh, without gambling too much on someone who's new. So I, I I actually think that's a pretty cool and fair way of of giving untested uh, people a shot. And by I mean industry untested we haven't heard of this guy yet dustin Rhodes, but we will and we have now all right next up from boker uh this is coming from matthew gentry what a great name matthew gentry i don't know this guy he's a custom uh, knife maker uh but this is his first production knife and it's with boker plus so that's a, a huge win <clears throat> Huge win for both him and Boker Plus, who has a, a, a gigantic catalog of custom knife maker collaboration knives. As a matter of fact, I, I would say that's their bread and butter. So this is a pocket fixy version, pocket fixed blade version of the Nesmuk, the classic outdoors uh, belt knife. It has an upswept 2.4 inch upswept Nesmuk style blade. And I, at, at such a short 
um, blade. It's hard to fully express that Nesmuk shape, but a, a Nesmuk kind of has an upswept shape, but a rounded off uh, tip. Uh, it's not like a Persian where it's upswept and it comes to a very acute point. It, it's upswept, but then it has kind of a bulbous point. Um, so this is getting there, but really it's that that edge, the blade edge that that um, that echoes the Nesmuk. With that deep belly, you get a little bit of straight on the front, a uh, little bit more straight on the back, but a deep uh, belly. This one has a full four-finger grip, which is cool. Uh, to me, it's evocative of a scalpel, uh, a lot like a scalpel. It looks more like a scalpel than the street scalpel by Topps. Um, that's uh, 12C27N. Um, yeah, full four finger grip on that micarta. It'll come in a Kydex sheet that has a nice little clip. Drop it right in the pocket. Have that, um, have that handle protrude uh, like people are doing these days with the pocket fixed blade uh, knives. And this one is 40 bucks. The MSRP, 40 bucks. That's pretty sweet. Uh, 4.3 ounces. So very light. I'm, I'm sorry, not 4.3. 2.43 ounces, so quite light and available now. All right, and next is another fixed blade knife. This is the third from Ostop Hell and Real Steel uh, recently. Mm. This one is called the Dex. The Dex is a 3.15 inch drop point of K110. It's flat ground K110. K110 is uh, uh, analogous to D2. It's uh, Oodle Home, right? Or it's a um, where is it made? Uh, oh, you're all screaming at your screen right now. This is a European D2, basically made by the same people who make uh, M390, whose name just kind of escapes me at the moment. Um, 3.15 inches is a perfect little fixed blade size for uh, for a daily carry fixed blade. This one you could definitely drop in the pocket. I dare say you could hang this around your neck. Uh, some people could, um, or this could ride in the waistband with a discreet carry clip quite nicely. And uh, you'd have enough to have a four finger grip, but it is not going to be extra long. It's not going to print very much. And then you have that arched um, pommel, which would be perfect for uh, over the over the pommel thumb grip like that. Anyway, you're going to get two handle options with this. And a cool thing about it is that the handle and the inlays are designed to be easily swappable. So you can swap things around and um, you can have them, you can have new inlays made, you could have new handles made, uh, or you can go with what they give you here. But I think it's pretty cool that it's uh, um, gonna be swappable. I don't think they know what the scales are or if they're gonna make extra scales available yet. This is not available, but it will be soon. From Ostop Hell, um, out of Poland and Real Steel, out of China. All right, that's it for Knife Life News this week. A lot of cool things coming out. You know what I think is kind of neat is there's a constant drip. There seems to be a constant drip of knives coming out. There's always a new knife coming every week. There's a couple, and we talk about them here. And uh, that uh, warms the cockles of my heart. Okay, uh, before we get to the state of the collection, another, another thing that warms the cockles of my heart is this store that Jim has put together. If you're interested in merch, if you like our cool logo, uh, designed by me and my sister and um, put on lots of cool stuff uh, by Jim. You can go to store.knifejunkie or, or you can go to the knifejunkie.com slash shop. Um, and there you will find all that kind of stuff with the logo. But also you can find T-shirts that Jim has designed, pages of them, really cool knife themed T-shirts with uh, witty maxims and really cool artwork. Uh, so go check that out, the knifejunkie.com slash shop. and. Uh, See what you find. You might find something that you like. All right, coming up, the state of the collection. The Shockwave Tactical Torch is your ultimate self-defense companion, featuring a powerful LED bulb that lasts 100,000 hours, a super sharp crenulated bezel, and a built-in stun gun delivering 4.5 million volts. Don't settle for ordinary. Choose the Shockwave Tactical Torch, the knifejunkie.com slash shockwave. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. So as I frequently mention, I'm no outdoorsman, uh, but I aspire to be. And uh, as I grow older, I think uh, uh, I will start doing more stuff uh, as my time frees up a little bit. Um, but before then, I will outfit myself and I will continue uh, to watch videos and live vicariously through other outdoors 
folk. Uh, but one thing that was kind of sadly lacking in my panoply of tools, uh, you know, I got a lot of great outdoors knives, but I needed a saw. So I got a saw and it's a folding saw by Corona. And this is the um, razor tooth saw. Okay, uh, I got this on Instagram. I saw, or not on Instagram, on Amazon. I saw a video or two of a guy cutting with it, and it was, it was the one that was kind of inexpensive enough for me to get and to try. Um, but still had some videos with some pretty good uh, reviews. Now I'm asking for help from you all out there uh, about folding saws. Now I, I know that Silky is supposed to be pretty good. I guess because they sell them at REI. I almost, I have a gift certificate, not a gift certificate, but the thing that you get from them uh, just for being a member. And I could buy one of them, but I was like, oh, maybe I'll hold out for something else. And I ended up buying this for half the price on, on YouTube. Do you guys know anything about these, uh, these saws? Uh, let me know. Should this have blade play? This has, uh, you know, I know the, the blade is supposed to be flexible, but within the pivot, it, there's blade play and i have uh, tried to tighten this down and there's no tightening it it is as tight as it goes so it's like is that is that there on purpose um built in play so that when you're sawing it's not so rigid in there that you're gonna break it if you um lose your tempo or get on off angle or whatever so um that's a question is play supposed to be built into a folding saw uh two and i'm loving this axe handle um, and and I'll see how it works. But what shape handle do you like? Because if you look at this versus, say, a silky, a silky saw, folding saw, is shaped like an arc. So almost the the opposite of this. This is very comfortable, and uh, I haven't even used it yet. It just arrived. Uh, but I'm going I'm going to take this outside and saw a couple of. I got to take it to the park and saw some logs like that. Uh, sawing logs usually to me means snoring, but today it will mean actually testing this out. So it looks like it's going to be comfortable. It feels comfortable, but it's sort of the opposite overall shape of, of say, a Silky brand saw. And I know there are plenty of other saws. Please let me know what you think. Have you used this one? It's it's plastic. Uh, I'm not sure what they're usually made out of, but uh, I'm going to go this route. And I, I, I'm not going to go crazy. I'm not going to be the saw junkie. Uh, but I do want to get uh, a good one. This one I'm going to take out and try, but uh, let me know what you guys think. That's what I'm getting at. You, uh, A lot of you are way more outdoorsy than I am. You go camping, you go hunting, you start fires, you live off the land, whatever you're doing, and you're using the saws, let me know, okay? Thank you. <laughs> but I think it looks cool. Let's uh, let's say let's say that. This does look kind of cool. It looks a little bit weapony, I got to say. So I was drawn in by that. <laughs> pardon me this one has a lock on the back and uh has a very bad very bad play so that you have to make sure that it's centered when you close it is this acceptable saw uh, saw um stuff or should i not should i not settle for a saw that has play i don't know i guess i can see both ways why it might make sense all right <clears throat> all that said i you know I bought that because you can't just have an axe. You can't just have a saw in the wilderness. Oftentimes, a knife like a big Bowie will do all of that for you. Um, and this is something that, uh, well, really every fall when, when I start doing uh, the fire pits again with the family, I, I really start to, to value the Bowie knife. And it's for the second one in this list. Actually, Jim, I'm going to go to the second one first because that's what really inspired this. Uh, it's the Trailmaster. The Trailmaster is, this is the most amazing knife, I got to say, probably that I own. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that I've had it really a long time and it's been on a few uh, misadventures with me. And it's just done a lot of work in the back, mostly splitting logs and stuff. Uh, when I first discovered Nutton Fancy and saw him using his Trailmaster to baton, I was like, that's that's brilliant. That's genius. And so I've used that a lot for this. I know you can have an axe and I have axes and stuff. And I guess you can do a lot more with those. But something about the one tool option, going into the wilderness and having a Bowie knife that you can uh, you know, skin your game with 
that you can split logs with, that you can do camp chores with, that you can cut food with, that you can fight with and defend yourself with, that you can have in hand when that brown bear is charging you. Um, that's This is something that you want, a Bowie knife. So uh, of all the knives that you could have out in the wilderness, you know, one knife option to me, uh, the Bowie is the one is the way to go. Now I have great knives like the like the uh, SE Hungless. That is a great drop point, do everything, ten inch, uh, quarter inch thick fixed blade knife. Uh, but on the on the holding it in your hand against a bear angle of things, it's lacking. So you can do a lot with it, and the fact that it doesn't have a swedge. Uh, means you're not going to bust up your baton as quickly as this one does because you've got a sharpened swedge here, zero, a zero ground swedge there. <clears throat> so uh, you won't have to deal with that, but this gives you everything else. This is a weapon. This is a tool. Uh, this is a do everything knife. And um, at nine and a half inches, I think the Trailmaster is a perfect Bowie. As a matter of fact, having this one out, um, last night and the weekend this weekend prior using it a lot nice and thick this this is i i gotta get another one i want to get one in 3v this of all the knives i have uh to double up on this would be the one so i might have to do that sadly sadly they don't make it with the leather sheath anymore my leather sheath is a little bit busted up you know my my retaining strap has always had duct tape on it because the way I use it, the the edge goes against that, and it slices every time. So duct tape to the rescue. Another one that would be will be great in the outdoors, uh, once I break its proverbial cherry, is the, if you'll excuse the expression, is the Work Tough Gear V44X Bowie. Based on the Marine Raider Bowie and that uh, that beautiful Western 49 profile, uh, this takes that to the max. I'm going to put the edge straight across, or I'm sorry, the, um, the spine straight across the, the camera here, and the straight across the screen. And if you look, you can see that edge diving downward. You've got that downward raked edge, and you've got about four to five inches of totally straight edge there. And then it graduates into that long belly um, with a little bit of straight at, at the front terminating in a very acute point. No swedge on this. I mean, a very it's more of a chamfer than a swedge. And uh, that's a good thing because a swedge on this would leave that super acute point just a little bit too acute for any sort of uh, rough chore. Even fighting, if you were to jam this into someone and it 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 was interrupted by a rib or something and you had a very thin point because of a swedge that would break. This is, and I say that uh, very callously, uh, but really this is uh, a great, this would make a great fighting Bowie option. I know when we think of fighting Bowies, we think of some of the long, longer, more uh, slender, uh, long swedged affairs, but uh, this would do a great job at it simply because of how it's balanced. Uh, it's, balanced really nicely it's got a long handle and that long handle adds a little weight it, it almost gives it like a sword like weight uh, so that the front of this 10 inch thick slab of steel is uh light and nimble i'll, I'll do it with my left hand because my right hand no well, i can do it with my right hand just to keep the thumb out of the way but uh 10 inches from my hand to that tip and, and a very thick and broad blade and yet it moves around really nicely great design with that long handle and the uh the horse hoof pommel down here just adds weight to there and gives it great balance that sort of fighting knife balance which is right in front of the handle even though it's a great here let's get it i gotta prove it now so there even though it's a great outdoors knife great for all those kind of camp chores and stuff it would be a great fighter too and that's what I love about Bowie knives. Uh, they they really run the gamut in terms of uh, use cases. And I just like looking at this one. I'm going to put it back down and, and stare at it for a second. You see that swedge. And I mean, I'm sorry. You see that choil. That's nearly a, it's more than a half circle. And it's in that steel. And you think, oh, that must be uncomfortable. But my lands, it is not. Not only did they do a nice polished job in there, but it's nicely chamfered. And it just feels great in hand when you come up here. And it's very secure. 
All right, I love this knife. I'm going to put it away. Really nicely knurled handle. And if you look at it from the top, it's uh, kind of Coke bottled, but lightly so. And then if a lanyard is your thing, there's a hidden lanyard option there. Um, but it's not like the other hidden lanyard options you see where they just give you a little slit and there's no way on earth you could get 550 cord. That's a nice, generous hole and two hole, uh, generous holes on either side of the scales to put that uh, put that lanyard in. But if lanyard is not your thing or if you don't like the feel of the lanyard under your thumb, if you're riding way back, well, it's back here. You don't have to worry about that. OK, enough. Great sheath. Uh, great sheath with uh, these D rings here, and they send it with a uh, a strap, so you can basically hang this around your neck, and that is the most comfortable way to carry this very broadly sheathed blade. Uh, you don't want this uh, on your belt, I don't think, unless you are a giant. Okay. Next up, this is a classic: the SP10 Raider Bowie. The Marine. The, this is another one based off of that Marine Raider style. So this is kind of a uh, in the same camp as the one we were just looking at. Before I take it out of the sheath, I'll just say this is a cheap Ontario uh, sheath, but the best cheap nylon sheath I've ever gotten, uh, including all the ones I've ever gotten from Topps. Uh, cool thing about this one. OK, sorry about that. Uh, this strap, it's got two retaining straps, which is great. This one is adjustable. Uh, in case you wrap the handle like I did with tape or something and it gets a little wider, you can adjust this clip or uh, this strap here. But this, what I love about this one here is when you undo it, this is now, if you're just listening, I'm talking about the retaining strap that goes over the pommel of the SP-10 on the sheath. When you pop it, it gets out of the way. It's very, uh, it's like spring loaded somehow. Uh, I guess it's like a piece of plastic or Kevlar or something in there. But when you undo it, it snaps out of the way, which is great. You can draw the, the knife without it getting in the way. And if you, it's an ambidextrous sheath. And if you do keep it on this side, you can either slide this over that way. Or if you don't want to slide it over, it's out of the way. And the knife blade isn't going to cut, isn't going to cut it. So really well considered uh, sheath. All you, you also have the molly uh attachments on that side and a belt loop but there's the blade sadly ontario well they went away for a while and i know they were going to start back up but i'm not sure whatever happened with that or what has happened with that or if it's still in process i got to sort of go back to their website and check in uh, but this is another one that was uh inspired uh, not inspired but the purchase was inspired by nothing fancy I always loved his videos with the SP-10 and the other uh, Ontarios in this line. They all had this kind of handle. Very, very grippy uh, rubber handle and kind of blocky. On the top, it's flat, and then uh, and then it rounds out on the bottom. Um, but super comfortable handle. I got to say, design-wise, I always thought it was awkward. This is obviously an off-the-shelf handle, and you can tell by how this is just kind of plopped on top but it doesn't bother me and actually it would look cool without the leather or without the metal um also it would work just fine uh, without that but this guard gives you extra protection not just here not just uh by your finger and your thumb but on the sides too because it's nice and broad great blade here this is 1095 they're 1095 um with Cerakote on it, and that stuff has rubbed off. I guess that's, yeah, Cerakote. It's that traction coating has rubbed off when I've uh, used it to baton. Wood looks dramatic when it comes off like that. I kind of like it, of course. It looks like I've used it a lot more than I have. Uh, about a quarter inch thick. Great, great knife. And again, this one is, here, I'm going to hold this in front of the main camera, but this one also has a great balance, would make, a great fighting knife if you had to fight with it. I wouldn't use my left. Uh, I would carefully use my right. I'll just tell you people, be careful around that part of your thumb because I've learned that nerves are there. And uh, if you sever one, you're screwed. And I came close. And uh, so when I bump it, it's more than just pain. <laughs> it's like, a, it reminds you that you're mortal. It's that kind of pain. Um, so be careful, be careful. I was, it was a moment, an unguarded moment of carelessness and uh, stupidity. And uh, 
I know it'll happen again. I just hope it's not as severe. All right, putting this one away, the SP10. Uh, take a look around online. I don't know if you can still find them, um, but it's definitely worth your money. And it was always kind of a an inexpensive knife. Now I'm sure they're going up in price because that's how that sort of thing happens. Okay, staying on the Marine Raider theme, we have the Cold Steel Western buoy. And the Western was, I, I, it's based on the Marine Raider style. I think they call it a Western because it's evocative of the Western 49, the W49. Uh, but in any case, uh, it's also a um, that sort of Raider style where you have the extreme clip up front. You have the diving uh, down of the straight towards the belly, albeit this one is less extreme. On this one, I love this giant S guard. I love it. It is so cool. It 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 it, it really makes this feel like a fighter. Uh, in hand, it's it's got a balance that is forward heavy. Um, unlike say the V forty four X that packs a lot of weight in the handle, keeping it balanced more like a sword. This has a bit of a chopper feel uh, to it. But these these uh, quillions here. Uh, not only protect the hand, but they do allow for some control. Um, I, I find that my hand, my thumb butts up against it oftentimes if I'm doing a something in a saber grip. And the flat, of course, I'm usually using my right hand, but the uh, the flats really give you something to grab on here on this handle. This handle is awesome. Uh, the flatter the handle, I think the more comfortable, uh, which is sort of counterintuitive uh, because you know it's not going anywhere. It can't rotate. You can't, you know, it's just you're just far less likely to rotate that knife when you're doing something that is uh, uh, engaging a lot of physics, if you will, uh, if it's flat on the sides. And we've learned that uh, I've learned that personally, but I, we also see Doug Markaida uh, talk about that a lot when he's going to strike a pig with a sword. If it's got a round handle, he's like, oh, God, it's going to it's going to twist. It's going to bend and not bend, but uh, twist in the hand. I'm just sitting here looking at the screen. What a perfect knife that is. That is, that's the kind of knife like when I was a kid, you think of knife and that's what I thought of right there with that big guard, that big Bowie blade and the clip point. I love it. And by the way, this is uh this is one of the cold steels that ships with a leather sheath. It's a great sheath. I highly recommend it. The one problem I had with the, uh, with the Western was the, coating they put on the handle so i kind of stripped it down as much as possible they put a lot on there and didn't let it dry thoroughly before sending it i guess so it's it always felt a little tacky so i just uh, took some 90 percent isopropyl uh rubbing alcohol and just rubbed it until until the cloth came back clean and so it lightened up the handle a little bit doesn't bother me at all retention strap all right, next we move on to a different style Bowie. This reminds me of most of the European Bowies you'll see. Uh, this one is from Spain. This is the Kudaman, but it reminds me a lot of some German Bowies uh, with that super neutral handle. You know, we, we refer to the coffee, coffin shaped handles. That's when it kind of flares out a little bit. This, I don't even know what to call it. It's like a stick handle, totally neutral. This again, similar to the, uh, the Western, this is the kind of knife I would have drawn as a kid. It's just like clip point, guard, handle. There's like not much to it, but in being simple, it is so excellent. It's a really comfortable handle to hold on to. This is my Carta. It's got red liners. Very nice. Um, but nicely textured. It does, not textured, but it's not polished. You know what I mean? It's not slippery, but it grips in the hand. Uh, which is something my Carta excels at. So it's it's funny to look at something like this that has such a neutral handle where the, the spine and the belly of the handle are exactly parallel and there's no pommel uh, to speak of to hold you in there. But it's so comfortable and uh, you can swing this around with sweaty hands and uh, it's not going to come flying out of your hands. Now, have I done much with this? When I first got it, I... I got it uh, at, at the same time I got the Western and the 1918 and, or 1917 and a couple of other knives. And I was doing a lot of like, let's see how this batons. And I think I may have done it once, but I was like, that's hollow ground. This is not a, a batoning knife. Um, but uh, I have 
it, it's done Carenza duty uh, quite a bit. So this is a fun one to shadow box with and to practice uh, the Bowie knife techniques I've seen online. I've never studied Bowie knife, but it's pretty intuitive if, if you know other stuff. And this one is very good for that. And with that hollow grind, for me, this is more of a hunting knife, more of a fighting knife, more of a big outdoor field knife. You could clear brush with this because uh, to me, the hollow grind, even though it's a thick and heavy blade, the hollow grind really makes it kind of thin behind the edge. You could, this could do a lot of great camp duty. Uh, but again, you could turn this to to fighting. I just don't think that it's much of a wood batoner because of that hollow grind. And a wood batoning should not be a prerequisite, okay, uh, for a Bowie knife or for any knife, I don't think. I, I feel like it's something that has been born in this day and age or or maybe was used in desperation when you didn't have a hatchet. Uh, I don't know. I, I could be mistaken about that, but it doesn't seem like batoning with a knife is, um, you know, should be a prerequisite to is it a good Bowie. But uh, since that is one of the few ways I actually use my Bowie knives, it's it's a measure. But I'm not going to do that with this next knife because it's a cable tang and it is a Musso Bowie. And this is all about fighting. This is the Natchez. Okay, let me use my other thumb. This is the Natchez Bowie by Cold Steel. Again, it would have been so great to have gotten my Natchez uh, in the leather sheath days. Don't get me wrong. This is an outstanding sheath. And you can do a lot of the same things you could with leather. Like without a clip, slip this in the belt and have have the the wideness of the opening here uh, be the little the thing that stops it from slipping into the belt you know or through the belt you can still use it that way but there's nothing like leather okay so the Natchez Bowie is what they call a Musso Bowie after Mr. Musso and I don't know um, his first name but he was one of the guys who created uh, the upswept kind of southern style Bowie here uh, that we see in this, which some people say the style was the kind that was used in the sandbar, the famed sandbar fight um, by Jim Bowie. Uh, I don't think anyone actually really knows. But what I know about this uh, is it's a very fighting oriented blade. And if you look at it, you can see why. Instead of it's got the reverse taper. Instead of tapering towards the handle as all the other ones so far have and having a big belly, which is great for slashing and chopping, this one tapers towards the tip. So, And with its long zero ground swedge, it's basically at the tip like a dagger. You've got a diamond point. Well, let me get it on screen. You've got a diamond point and a very sharp back back edge that back edge is great for not slicing not cutting stuff uh but gouging tearing uh that sort of that sort of cut so that's used here i'll come to the main camera that that sharpened swedge or even if it's unsharpened i've shown this in uh in in uh, videos here but you drop as a as someone thrusts in or gets gets their arm and their weapon close to you you drop yours down in a flicking motion onto onto their hand and it is it's really wicked uh, so much so that a lot of people fought with uh knives with uh, bowie knives clip point knives like this and used that uh used that front tip to to break the bone to gash to to split to tear and you know especially with that tip and then to stab and then heave ho backwards. That's how they taught a lot of uh, U.S. military during World War II. That's how they showed them how to use the the Randall knife. Uh, they called that the Randall fighting method, where you have it backwards and you because the Randalls all had the sharpened swedge. And then you put your finger over the grip. And there's even on the number one blade, there's even a little notch there for you to put your finger in. And you'd smash and and. Do that back cut with the with the back edge of the blade, and then stab and pull back with the with the top edge or the main edge. So that's what we could get from this. Um, to me, the way this is weighted again, like a sword with the heavy pommel on that beautiful grip. This grip is gorgeous, by the way. Uh, it's micarta. It's not polished, but not textured. It's just sort of smooth, and your hand 
you can feel kind of the ridges of the fabric in there. Uh, but with that big guard and this heavy pommel, uh, you have a lot of weight towards the back, towards the front part of the hand, which allows that long, long blade and that tip way down at the end to move around really nicely uh, and easily. Now, cable tang is what I call this. That means the tang of the blade comes down to about here. And then it's soldered to a cable, a steel cable that comes to here and is soldered to a, a, a threaded pin and then screwed on here. And, and you think, oh, my God, that's terrible. You know, that's a terrible way to make a knife. It turns out it's pretty damn strong. And that cable in there absorbs a lot of shock coming from the blade. So there's a little bit of flexibility in there. And, um, you know, cold steel's uh, on point. They've got their soldering down. Like, it, I'm not concerned about this knife, though. It's uh, at a very thick, um, at a very thick five sixteenths of an inch and that broad blade. It would make for a great batoning blade. Uh, I just wouldn't use it because I, I don't, I'm not sure that it can take or should take that much shock here. A and B with that sharp front edge, you just mangle your, uh, mangle your baton the whole time you just be picking up new batons uh, so this is really a fighting knife and so therefore it gets no use <laughs> it gets no use except appreciation and uh, you know it's around in case i get in the knife fight but uh, i have other options too but as far as bowies go man i love this thing uh, just wish the leather just wish i had the leather look at that big come out with this all right I don't want to fight, but if we have to, they'd be like, okay, I'm leaving. Von Temsky, the next one, Svord, Svord out of Sweden. This thing is, uh, I mean, out of New Zealand, I guess. But Svord out of New Zealand. Uh, Von Temsky was a guy, uh, was a, um, a ranger who, who's, who he and his crew uh, ranged around New Zealand carrying these things, uh, riding around on horse. They were like rough riders, basically. Um, and this was the knife that he had made for himself. And, uh, and so he had them made for all of his dudes. So this is why it's called the Von Temsky Bowie. And sorry for the, uh, sorry for the, is it New Zealand or is it Sweden? I always think it's Sweden in my mind because I think of Svord, uh, but S V O R D, they're from New Zealand as you can see, NZ, beautiful, big chunk of steel. This thing is a quarter inch thick and, uh, what do you call this convex ground, like a third of it. So it's like, it's got so much weight up front. Now it does have a nice long full tang handle with this beautiful, uh, walnut grip. The grip is so nice. It feels great. It's also like the Kudaman, uh, Bowie where it's just, uh, two parallel lines are the handle. It's got that nice big uh, S guard. But what's neat about this one is you turn it on its side. Look at how much it comes over the side here. So if you're in some sort of altercation and blades are sliding on blades, which I used to be a bigger deal than it is now, um, it can stop. If you slide up, it'll stop here on that little plate. Uh, so it reminds me a little bit more of an older uh, design with that with that flare on the side. Really nice knife. This my brother got for me uh, for Christmas years ago at this point. Uh, but again, this one is a, a big one and very impressive. Again, come out with this one and people will definitely assume that you're a pioneer riding the range. Very awesome. Uh, again, beautiful, beautiful leather sheath on this one. Super thick, um, really nice. Nicely done. And the Sford logo is kind of cool. Reminds me a little bit of the Sikh symbol. Okay, next up, two more cold steels before we're out of here. And then we look at the last one. But this this next cold steel is the Laredo with the this is an older one, obviously, because you can tell from this. And I don't know what the tool steel was when I got the oh, I think this was a A1. I believe, uh, but I put a nice patina on it because this one, uh, the sheath scratched the blade up something, something fierce, and I didn't want to send it back. And it also had a, a split in the faux Coca Bolo handle here. Never send it back. I just, this was mine and I'm going to live with it or whatever. It was 
before I was as proactive as I am now, this was 20 years ago. I was like, I guess this is just the Bowie I get. Uh, how the hell do you return something to Amazon? How do I know? But anyway, um, so this one, I, I did a white vinegar uh, patina on. And um, this, like the nachos, is a purebred fighting Bowie. It's got that same cable tang in here. And, um, and it's got a flared out guard on the side. So you've got a lot of coverage on the guard. Uh, this is 5 16ths of an inch thick. So nice and thick, full flat ground, super sharp. And then again, that nice long zero ground swedge. Really sweet fighting knife. Now this one uh, does do duty. This does not get locked up. This is uh, strategically stashed uh, for for pulling and using if, if heaven forbid it's needed. Uh, if ever uh, someone unwelcome makes it to a certain part of the house, this is what they're going to get. And they won't be happy about it. This and several other things, uh, things that fly through the air uh, before, before reaching them. All right, I'm going to put this one away. Uh, next up is, so we were talking about beautiful S-guards. This one takes the cake. Here is the Cold Steel uh, 1917 Bowie. Look at that. We've got the cool shape here, the metal shape on the beautiful sheath. And uh, you've got this frog that removes. Unfortunately, that stud is attached to the frog and not the sheath. So when you take the frog off, it doesn't have that stud anymore, which is a huge design mistake because that stud would be great for just slipping the thing in the belt if you don't want to hang it from the belt. But Someone wasn't thinking. Hopefully they lost their job. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so this is a blued. That's something I love about this. I love that blued blade. And it is, uh, this one's out of India. Had that same issue with the handle uh, as the Western style buoy. So I just um, rubbed it down with isopropyl until it was no longer tacky. And now it's perfect. And you look at it, you think it's a weird handle. You think it's not going to be comfortable. It is very comfortable. Again, aligning with that thought that a flat sided handle is not going to turn. It's going to feel so secure in hand. And it does. And, and orientation matters when you're dealing with something with a single, you know, with an edge, you don't want it like this. You don't want it like this. It, it matters how it's oriented. So that flat, you know, without looking at it. And then of course you put your, if you're in the pitch dark, you just feel that that's where the quillion is. But this one also gives you that forward uh, notch so that if you need to get up close to do your, oops, jacked up the camera a little bit. If you need to get up close on whatever you're working on, you can wrap your finger around there. But I am a sucker for this guard. That guard is straight off. To me, this looks like a cavalry saber that's been repurposed. Like maybe it was broken in battle. So it was reground to be a Bowie blade. And then here they cut off the back part of the guard. Uh, it just looks like a repurposed uh, saber to me. And I love that about this knife. It really does look like a pioneer's knife to me. Uh, would make a great all-arounder. This I've uh, batoned wood with, did just fine. Uh, I was worried about the guard starting to rattle. It did not. But again, why tempt fate? This this isn't for that. To me, this is more of a fighter and, uh, you know, that kind of thing. It's more of a weapon. Uh, that's the 19... Oh, boy, I keep hitting my camera with these long knives. 1917 Frontier Bowie. All right, last in this list is kind of the least Bowie just in form, but it's the Predator Hunter, the Puzan Predator Hunter Bowie from, from Work Tough. I'm just going to leave this here. From Work Tough Gear, a big knife. And based on the stylized Bowie machetes that were used by the whole team in Predator, the, the greatest movie of all time and uh, used and, and sort of highlighted by uh, by the Native American Billy when he when he throws away his guns and he you know he's going to make a stand against Predator with his Bowie knife. And he, and he pulls it out and he cuts his chest with the swedge. All of that. Still one of the best scenes of all time. And then you and he wraps the thing around his you You know, in movies, how easy it is to pull things off your neck. So he pulls it off, wraps it around, cuts his chest. Ah, and then we hear, we hear, he does not make it. Uh, but this, I love this thing. This has seen some outdoor action. I just 
cleaned it. I had a lot of uh, pine sap stuck on this one. So a little WD-40 took that, took care of that. Uh, just a beautiful blade. Again, with that, with that nice uh, grip there, uh, you can just come right in there with your with your finger and it's uh nice and chamfered and feels great all right before we dip out of here i know i've kept you long enough let me show you this in the big camera got to be careful i don't want to hit anything on the way look at this beauty look at that beauty so a bowie knife you got the clip point you got the thickness you got the length really they should be technically they should be 10 inches and a quarter inch long with a with a clip point who am I to make definitions? All right. Thanks for watching Big Bad Bowies. And uh, thanks for joining us here on this midweek supplemental. Be sure to join us tomorrow night for Thursday Night Knives. And if you're watching this as it drops, uh, you can become a gentleman junkie and win that super awesome uh, Northern Knives Paul Munko uh, designed thing. All right. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.